insanely bored in quarantine, I made a very, very important discovery and realization. To play video games, you need controllers. So, today I want to take you through the entire history of Nintendo's main uh, controllers. And by that I mean uh, with every console they release, their main uh, controller for that console is all I will talk about. So when they released the NES, they released the NES controller that came with it, and that's the only one I will talk about. Because there is way too many third party and other controllers made by Nintendo themselves, or licensed by Nintendo, that I would not be able to get through this in like a five minute video. It will not be five minutes. This is going to be like ten minutes. That's not that long. Whatever. I, if, if I keep ranting, it will be ten minutes. So, the NES controller itself is basically just a brick. It's a brick with a D-pad and a few buttons on it. But this isn't the first time they used the D-pad, as the D-pad was created for the Game & Watch series of handhelds that Nintendo created. Now, that can be a whole video in itself, so I'm not going to go into that. But, basically, NES controller is uses the d-pad and i think the re i think the fact that nes controller uses it is the reason that it is on like every controller since then including con uh, controllers on the uh, playstation and xbox uh apart apart from that they have the a and b button which um is basically it's just two buttons isn't it uh they do things in games they shoot they make you run they make you jump they do that they make you do anything they're just some bog standard buttons but they are very clicky and it's very fantastic to press them and apart from start and select that is it that is it for the nes controller so i will move on to their next uh controller for the snes um now this solves the one problem people had with the nes controller which was the uh, the corners of the controller sort of dug into your hand and your palms while you were playing, and that could get quite uncomfortable. And so the SNES controller fixed this by being more curved, and this worked really well. Because uh, on top of that, they not only d they added two more face buttons, which are X and Y, uh, which makes some great games and make a lot more opportunity possible with these new buttons. And they also add L and R, uh, which is the first time any shoulder buttons or bumpers are ever used. And, you know, the Nintendo invented the D-pad, Nintendo invented the bumpers, and as you will soon find out, they invented the analog stick. Nintendo invented a lot. Like, and I'm sure, um, eventually another company would have come up with an analog stick and bumpers and the D-pad and everything, but the fact that Nintendo did it is just a testament to how great they are and how long they've been around as a company. Um, now I don't want to briefly mention the Game Boy, as I will also mention the Game Boy Advance later on, as also as well as the DS. I don't technically mention the 3DS, but the same goes. While the SNES was going great, they also uh, decided that they wanted to do more than just their Game & Watch series of console. And they thought, I want a handheld that can actually play games, like full-on NES games. And so they made the Game Boy. And it's a very simple control layout. It is just, it's basically an NES controller, but it's thinned down, and the D-pad and buttons are close together, and there's a screen on top. That is it. It is a fucking brick. Everything's a brick. I told you this before, everything's a brick. No, well, that's that's fine, whatever. I can deal with everything being a brick, but it's just a bit boring, isn't it? Um, there's really nothing else to say. It's the Game Boy, so we'll move on to the N64. So after their controllers and consoles being a brick, a slightly curved brick, and a vertical brick, they decided they wanted some originality. And well, the Nintendo 64 controller, it's not a brick. You can't say, tell anyone it's a brick. <laughs> right, this controller is regarded as one of the worst ever. And I see where they're coming from. It has an incredibly confusing and awkward button layout. Uh, it has a D-pad to move in 3D games. Um, it only has one analog stick that is very flimsy and can very easily cut your hands. In including cuts that can lead to, like, scars. And, like... <laughs> It does one thing right, as well as invent. Basically, they invented the analog stick, but they did it very badly, and they had the first thing that I would actually regard as a trigger, and not just a bumper. But it only has one trigger, and it is on the dong, a uh, prong, a dick that the N64 controller has. And so the fact that it has a trigger is good, and it's not really bad, although it could be in a better location, but it's not a victory by any means, although it is better than nothing. Now, moving on to the GameCube controller. Now, after that monstrosity, there was nowhere they could really go but up. 
And boy, did they go up. The GameCube controller is the exact opposite of the N64. It is regarded as one of the best controllers of all time. Uh, so much so that it is still being remade for the Switch today. Granted, it only works as Smash Bros. Ultimate. But it's still a testament how great that controller is. That people say they need to play on that controller. And the reason it's so good is... Well, I don't actually have it. But from researching, people say it's so good because it has... Uh, two analog sticks that are very great to use, although the C stick could be bigger, but that's not really in my the end of the world. Um, has a satisfying D-pad uh, and an innovative button layout that is actually very easy to get used to and use once you get used to it. Um, and finally, has two triggers, which I put on the end there, because uh, obviously the N64 controller already had one. However, it does only have one bumper, which seems a bit pointless. Like even the SNES controller had two bumpers. But I'm not going to get into it, because everything else about the controller is perfect. And I really do think they struck gold there. Um, now, I'll quickly just talk about the GBA. Um, that's how Nintendo was earning most of their money at the time. Because the, uh, as, well, as well as the GameCube was doing, and as well as people look back on it fondly now, it really wasn't selling as well as some of their other consoles had. And so they relied on their handheld line to really keep the company, not afloat, but keep them as a good business. And so when they made the Game Boy Advance, they sort of got a bit lazy. Like, every other Game Boy was just a vertical brick or a vertical brick that could fold. Now, it's a horizontal brick again, there's a screen, it's just the NES controller with a screen in the middle and some bumpers. It's really boring. But, you know, we're going to move on to the Wii. Now, Nintendo decided that because they lost more money, it's because there wasn't enough bricks. So they made the controller a brick and the console a brick. And that worked, and it's now the second best selling console of all time, and one of the best, and extreme, and really went well with the casual market, which obviously they were trying to go for. Um, now, the Wii Remote itself is basically just an NES controller with a motion sensor put on the end that's a bit thinner, but like that is it. If I talk about anything else, I would just be repeating myself. So I won. The Nintendo DS was basically Nintendo thinking, right, why did the Wii succeed? More bricks. How do we improve? Uh, how do we improve on our Game Boy Advance? Oh, it's quiz time. We're gonna ask you how do we improve on the Game Boy Advance? Did we a innovate the graphics and and then put more buttons to make a better console? Did they b make some fantastic games to sell the console? Or c all of the above? You have ten seconds. I'm not waiting ten seconds. That will do. The answer is g. It's not a fucking brick. They put a fucking brick on top of the Game Boy Advance, and that's the DS. And that worked. Okay, like, it's not just that, they did add another, the X and Y back onto the DS, which for some reason there was only two buttons on the GBA, but not to get into that. And obviously the touch screen was great for a lot of games, and it really did innovate, and it was fantastic, but they could have thought of something more creative, could they not? But whatever, Nintendo likes bricks, gotta get used to it, and I'm fine with that. Right, talking about the Wii U. Wii U gamepad. Wii U console. Don't talk about the fact that it's a brick. Don't talk about the fact that it's a brick. Don't talk about the fact that it's a brick. Don't talk about the fact that it's a fucking brick. There's the bricks. Bricks everywhere. It's fucking bricks. All they do is bricks. I'm gonna go insane. Okay, so. It's not just a brick, the cons the, uh, well, it is a fucking brick, but the gamepad itself is surprisingly comfy to hold. The triggers are satisfying, the analog sticks are great, uh, there's obviously amiibo support, the touchscreen and the stylus are great, especially for Mario Maker, and even just the fact that you can uh, have the TV going normally at the same time while continuing to play your game is amazing and very useful, at least for me. Like, when I was at my dad's, no, um, I've gone on a rant here, but oh well. When I was at my dad's, I would just take the Wii U gamepad upstairs to my room and it would still connect. And I just thought that was amazing at the time. And although it's not quite as mind-blowing now, we have the Switch, we can just pick it up from anywhere. It was just great. I want to say back in the day, but it really wasn't that long ago. So, now I, for the Switch, I could talk about Joy-Con Drift, 
or I could talk about the lack of a D-pad on the Joy-Cons, but if you're watching this video, you almost definitely have a Switch. So, you know what, I'm gonna leave you with this illustration that my editor is gonna make of the Switch. Have fun, Gary. Just four fucking breaks!